create this fun poncho, we will be using the Starlight Chunky from Mary Maxim, which is super fun because that means it's gonna work up super quick because it is a super bulky yarn. And then I will also be using my size P 10 millimeter furls crochet hook. This is one of the streamlines. It's perfect for working with this yarn. I absolutely love combination and they match. So that's super fun. Let's get started. To create the center cable band in the child size, start by chaining 11. And then we are going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and across for a total of 10 stitches. Now we will turn and chain one. The chain one does not count as a stitch and I kind of like to tighten it down a little. And now we are going to be working in the back loops only. If you work, look at the top of your stitch, you'll notice it's they're like V's. You're going to work in the part of the V that is farthest away from you only. So on this other side. So we're gonna slip stitch across the 10 stitches in the back loop only. So I'll insert that back loop only and slip stitch. And you don't want to slip stitch too tightly because if you do, you won't be able to work into it very easily on the next row. So loosely slip stitch into those back loops of those 10 stitches across. Row three is a repeat of row two. So we are simply going to chain one and then slip stitch in the back loop only for the 10 stitches across. For row four, I have turned and chained one and I will slip stitch into the first three stitches in the back loop only. And this is where we are going to bring in some cable work. It's going to be really fun. We are going to do a front float treble around the stitch below. So you're just gonna go straight down to the stitch on row one. You're just gonna catch it, whatever stitch it is. It doesn't even have to be the entire stitch if you just wanna catch a strand, that's fine and then we are going to finish that treble. Now here's the difference with floating stitches versus the regular cable stitches. We will not be skipping any stitches on the back. So I'm going to slip stitch one in the back loop and then I'm going to go ahead and do another front floating treble. Now I'm going to slip stitch two stitches in the back loop. And now I'm going to repeat what I did over here. I'm going to do a front float treble just straight down from row one. And now I'm going to slip stitch one in the back loop only. And now I'm going to do another front float treble. This is the only time we're going to be working into rows below. From here on out, we will actually be working into the floating stitches that we just created. And now we have three stitches left and we are going to front flow into the last three stitches. Now this looks pretty weird. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you're feeling that way. Like, is this right? It is right. Our next row is what is also another difference in doing these type of cables is that we are going to skip our floating stitches. So now this is where we will be skipping the floating stitches as we slip stitch 10 stitches across. So I'll slip stitch in the first three, skip the next floating stitch and do a slip stitch. Skip the next floating stitch and do two slip stitches. Skip the next floating stitch and do one slip stitch. And then we're going to skip the very last floating stitch and do three slip stitches into the last. Now as we turn our work, we can see that it's not curving as much. It looks a lot cleaner and it will even get better and you will love the results as we work this up. Now for the next two rows, so for row six and row seven, it is also simply slip stitching in the back loops across. 
So do that for those two rows and then come back for row eight. For row eight, we are going to cross these cables. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We are going to slip stitch into the first three stitches in the back loop only. And now we are going to skip these first floating stitches and we are going to work the next two floating stitches. So we will do a treble, so we'll yarn over twice, do a treble floating stitch, and this time we're working around the floating stitch from below. And then we will slip stitch one. And now we're going to work this floating stitch over here. And if you notice, I'm not always going around the entire stitch and sticking my hook through. So a lot of times I like to catch just a couple of strands. That way it's not as bulky of um, a join when I do it by catching just a couple strands versus the entire stitch. It just seems to be smoother for me. It's just personal preference. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the next two into the back loops only. And now it's time to come back and work those first two floating stitches. I like to turn my work slightly. I find it a lot easier. So I will yarn over twice, go into that first floating stitch and complete that treble. Slip stitch one from the background. And now I will do the front floating treble around this last one over here. It's kind of hanging out. And now that we've got all those worked, we will slip stitch into the back loop of the last three. Now the next three rows, we will be doing slip stitching, 10 stitches across, but for this first one, remember, we will skip the floating stitches. So slip stitch the first three, skip one, slip stitch, skip one, slip stitch two, skip one, slip stitch, skip one, and slip stitch three. And then for the next two rows, slip stitch into the back loop only and come back for row 12. And now for row 12, chain one and I will slip stitch into the first three. And now I'm going to do a treble, front float treble around the front float stitch from below. Slip stitch into the back loop only and do another front float treble. We're just working across these front float trebles here in the order that they are. And now we'll slip stitch two in the back loops. Do another front float treble. Slip stitch in the back loop, front float treble. And now we slip stitch into the last three. And now once again, for the next three rows, we will simply turn and chain one and slip stitch into the back loops only. And guess what? Now that we are done with row 15, we actually have our repeat. Our repeat is row eight through 15. Now that we have created the center cable panel and then we have the body, it's time to put these together. So we have our center cable, I'm just, I, you can kind of see where we're going here. I've sat it in the opening of the body of this poncho, and now I'm going to use slip stitches to attach the sides. To do this, I'm going to take another strand of yarn, and I'm going to insert my hook from the top going down from the right side, and then this center panel on the left. And then I'm going to yarn over, and pull that yarn through both the left panel and on the right side. 
Now I'm going to be repeating this and chaining these two sides together. So I'll insert my hook into the right side and then the center panel underneath here. You can kind of feel it as you go, but underneath I'm going to yarn over. So my working yarn is underneath and then I'm going to pull that through and that looks like a really nice stitch that will run along the end here. So let me do a few more so you can see a little bit more of what it will look like. So as you can see, as I continue going on here, it creates a nice join. I like doing this better than sewing. I'm not really keen on sewing. <laughs> it's just not my best friend. So I enjoy these type of ways, this chain way of joining two pieces of fabric together because I think it looks really nice. And at first it will feel a little bit odd because of your working yarn coming out from underneath it but after practicing a few, it will get much easier. So just continue doing this all the way up this side, and then we're simply going to move over here and repeat this until the both sides are joined. Now going up this other side here, I do like, once again, I'm grabbing the outside, then the center. So I'm first going through the outside body panel and then down through that center cable panel and then slip stitching through both of those. As you can see how it's going to work out, I've fastened off my ends on this first side. I'll finish this second side and then fasten off my ends and weave those in and then we will be ready for some ribbing. All right, welcome back. We've got our front panel attached. This is looking really, really cute. And so we only have two things left to finish and that is the neck cuff. And then we've got uh, a little cuff around our arms for like a little sleeve, which I really like that because it helps it stay on and stay in place, especially for little ones. The best way to do this, I went over this a couple times thinking like, oh gosh, what's the best way to do this? And here's what I came up with. I think this is the easiest way for me to explain it. Since we attach this panel, we've kind of got, um, you know, we don't really necessarily have an exact stitch count around the bottom because we've got some seaming going on. We have an estimate. So what we are going to do for this size is you're going to start at the first stitch to the right of this seam, and we will count over 22 stitches and mark the next one. So I'm gonna skip 22 stitches on this right side, mark the next one, and mark this one and 16 stitches. So I've got between these two stitch markers, including the, the ones the stitch markers are on, is 16 stitches. I'm going to use these 16 stitches to make a cuff. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I've counted over 22 stitches and I've marked the next 16 stitches. So let's go ahead and work this cuff. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this first stitch marker for the, less, the, for the left cuff, and I'm going to join my yarn into that stitch. And now I'm going to chain a total of six chains. Now I will slip stitch in the second chain from the hook, and for this we will be working in back loops only to create this ribbing for the whole thing. For the first row we are simply going to slip stitch five stitches, so slip stitch from the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the same for this very first one and slip stitch into the next stitch as well. Now we are going to turn and we are going to work back down these slip stitches that we did, but we will skip the two slip stitches we did along the bottom of that body. So I skip two stitches working in that back loop only. I will slip stitch five.
And now once again, I'm going to be turning my work, kind of turn it backwards here so I don't have to flip the whole thing, and chain one. And once again, now we will slip stitch into the back loops only for five slip stitches. And now we will slip stitch two along the bottom of that body, turn your work, skip the two stitches that are along the bottom of the body and working the back loops only, slip stitch five. And so you just simply repeat those two rows back and forth until you have a ribbing slip stitch. You will work this until you get to the other stitch marker. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up we're going to line up our beginning edge and our current edge and we are going to join them. So to do this, I'll bring those edges together and I'm going to be working still in the back loops of my current edge. But before I insert my hook into that back loop, I'm going to bring my hook over to this side and I'm going to grab this loop from the first edge. Oh, I like to bring my yarn. Sorry, my yarn should be over here. I'm going to grab the first loop from the first edge and then insert my hook into the back loop of the current edge and slip stitch those together. We're going to continue that for the next four. So grab the loop from your starting edge and then the back loop only from the edge we're currently working on and slip stitch. So we're just going to slip stitch all the way up these five stitches and what that will do is it will join these cuffs together, the ends together to create the cuff for the arm or the little little wrist cuff. And it will help this poncho stay in place, especially for children. I honestly like it for adults too. That way when you put the poncho on and the child is wearing it or you're wearing it, you just simply place your head, your hands through here. I think it adds a little bit extra warmth and it holds it in place for a nice, nice style. So it's really, really cute. You don't have to put this on here if you don't want, but I, do, I, I like it on there. Same for the other side. You will do the exact same thing we just did for this cuff for the other side working between these two stitches, stitch markers. Now let's finish off this neckline to make this a bit cleaner and we're, we're going to make a cuff there as well. Well, an, yeah, a little bit of ribbing happening. So I like to attach my yarn on the side. I find it's the most, um, the best spot where you're not really going to see it. So I attach my yarn to any hook along the side. And for this one, we are going to chain four. And now we will work from the second hook, second chain from the hook and across. So just like we did the sleeve ribbing, we're going to work three, th three slip stitches this time across. Then we're going to grab two stitches from the neck top, turn our work, skip those two stitches that are along the neck top and slip stitch in the back loop only of those three stitches. And then that's what we will continue all the way around is just working those three stitches. I'll chain one and turn, working in the back loop only, slip stitch three. Then slip stitch two stitches from the top of the neck. Turn, skip those two stitches and slip stitch three. So you will do that all the way around the top of the neck and then join the exact same way that we joined for the cuffs. I'm gonna hurry and finish this and then I am actually off to photograph this today. I'm in a bit of a, a rush to get this one done. I've been working on it for a while and I have a friend meeting me with her beautiful children so that I can get this modeled. I'm so excited. I hope that you have enjoyed this design as much as I have. I cannot wait to go see this on a child because I think it's absolutely precious. And be sure to hit that subscribe button, follow my channel, follow my blog. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you for the next pattern. Thanks so much.